Things Covered listeners, all Things Covered viewers. We got another outstanding, impactful show for you guys today. You guys know what time it is. If you're fans of the NFL, the NFL draft is right around the corner. And as you know, what we like to do, me and Pat P, we like to highlight some of the up and coming prospects, guys that you will enjoy cheering for on Sundays. And this is another draft like show for you guys. Now, this is a difficult, difficult show for me because as you see over my left shoulder, I got number eight hanging up in my locker behind me. And y'all know what that what jersey that is. That's Florida State. So, you know, playing at Florida State, certain universities we really don't rock with. Miami and Florida. But I got to throw my hate aside for this particular episode. Because, of course, this young gentleman is a guy I've been knowing for a long, long time because I know his father, know his uncle as well. Me and his father came out of high school at the same time, played in the secondary. Great relationship. And, of course, he's groomed his son to do the same things that he's been able to do in his professional career when he was playing. But his son went to Florida. Florida native, out of Palm Beach, one of the best corners in the draft, potential first-round selection, uh, elite draft-like prospect. And he is a Gator. Kair Elam is joining us here. All things covered. Pat Peterson, Brian McFadden. Kair, how you feeling? How you doing? I'm blessed. I can't complain. You know, I'm just happy to be here. Happy to be able to speak with you guys. Man, listen, it's an honor. Number one, we're biased because we're secondary guys. You know how playing in the secondary is, man. It's a bond. It's a brotherhood. And uh, hats off for everything that you've been able to accomplish so far in your career and for your future endeavors. So let's go ahead and get Let's go back in time. Let's take it to the beginning, right? So right now, you consider one of the best athletes in the draft, one of the best corners in the draft. But we heard that wasn't always the case for you, especially in middle school and early high school days, your early high school days. But uh, what did it take for you to get to, to this point to be considered one of the best athletes in the world at what you do? <laughs> I'm the best. But they, uh, uh, if, uh, uh, Okay, put a stamp on it then. My bad. Yeah, put a stamp yeah. on it. I'm the best corner, but... Honestly, you know, uh, middle school and elementary school, you know, I was a you know, chubby kid. You know, I lived with my mom, grew up with my mom. And basketball was my first love growing up, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Played chapel basketball, played rec basketball. Um, but I wasn't I – w- I wouldn't say I was a great athlete until, you know, my dad, in order for me to play football, I didn't play until eighth grade. I had to run track. Mm-hmm. And so I think that really benefited, benefited me a lot because, you know, it helped my explosiveness, get build stamina mature my body a little bit so i credit that to my you know my dad there's wisdom i would say and just me putting in the work as well too and, and and talking about your dad i mentioned earlier in your intro your dad played in the national football league played in the secondary your uncle matt elam played in the secondary matt was a first round draft pick he was 32nd overall in the first round but what would what, what would it mean for you to follow their footsteps and be potentially the highest drafted player in the family <laughs> Um, I always, I always knew, you know, it'll be, it'll happen, you know what I'm saying? But I got to go out and work and achieve it as well. But it's in, it's in the GMs and everybody else's hands, but not mine. But, you know, I know it'll happen, but honestly, I, it, it's not, I'm not, I don't compare myself, you know, to my dad or my uncle. I'm mm-hmm. striving for my own personal, um, uh, goals and things I have set for myself. But, you know, uh, honestly, I don't, I, I really, there's no pressure. You know what I'm saying? I just go want to go out there and just prove to myself, you know, that I'm I'm the best. And every time, every time I step on that field, I want to just prove that. So, well, Kai, okay, let's keep it real. I understand you being humble right now, but when you play in the secondary, you gotta have a little swag. You gotta be confident, right? And I come yeah, from a definitely. football. I come from a football family as well. We had three DBs play the National Football League. So I'm gonna ask you this question right now. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Out of you, your uncle, and your dad, who's the best DB in the family? Myself, without a doubt. No hands down. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I tell your dad that. But okay, I like it. I like the confidence. And no, nope. nah, but honestly, yeah. I, honestly, I learned that. You know, I I got to learn from their mistakes. So if I mm-hmm. if I'm not if I wasn't, you know, I feel like that'll be a sin on me. Yeah. Just because I just took everything that you know had they weren't good at what they passed down to me, the wisdom, the knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I also feel like I'm the best athlete in the family as well too. Mm-hmm. Just because, mm-hmm. Not because. Not because me being cocky or arrogant, nothing like that. I just, yeah. you know, the work the work I put in and the knowledge they gave me so I didn't make the mistakes they did. So, honestly, I just credit that to them, making me who okay. I am as well. I like it. And and, and let's, let's keep it real. Like you said, being able to follow their footsteps, they had the blueprint for you. You know what I mean? So your journey was a little more smoother than theirs because when you're the first to do it, you go through a lot of obstacles that might not be in your favor. But then also, too, you're able to hand down the knowledge 
for the next ones who's coming up behind you. Similar to what I did with Pat P and your father and your uncle's done a tremendous job in getting you to this point right now. Your dad went to Cardinal Newman, your uncle went to Dwyer. You ended up going to Benjamin, which is which is which isn't known as a football powerhouse, but how did you yeah. end up there? So, uh, you know, my mom, like elementary and middle school, my mom used to drive 35, 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes to send me to the best schools because mm-hmm. uh, she didn't want me going into inner city schools with my uh, my inner city friends and stuff like that. So I always, so my parents always tried to give me the best education and get me away from my environment that I grew up in. So, um, so Benjamin was, you know, the best school in the area and best private school in the area. I think Michael, Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods, their kids, they go to elementary school, but I think their kids will go there as well. And mm-hmm. It's very expensive too. So I, I was able to get a scholarship to go there, but you know, yeah, I think yeah. I credit, yeah. So go ahead, my bad. No, I credit them for, for putting me there, you know what I'm saying? But that's how I was, I ended up going there because, um, you know, I got a scholarship there, but. Okay. And your high school coach said you're the best player to ever come through the program. Were you aware of that? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, but, uh, you know, we have a, a few other corner, I mean, other players as well. That's really good. Like quarterback at Florida State is really good. Uh, Jordan Nicola, Travis. Jordan Travis, yeah. So we have yeah. Nicola NC State, Josh Pierre Lewis. A okay. lot of, mo- multiple other players as well, but, you know, I, I consider myself the best. Uh, yeah, most, most definitely. Okay, so because of the success you had at Benjamin there in Palm Beach, you had the who's of who coming at you, knocking down your door, trying to land your services to attend their university. You had the rivals, the state rivals all in Florida, <laughs> Miami, Florida State, Florida. Uh, yeah. But you ultimately decided to choose Florida. First, why did you pick the Gators? And second, who is your most hated in-state rival and why? <laughs> all of them. No, nah, but honestly, um, I would say the reason I really picked Florida was because, you know, I just want to go somewhere where I could truly sit down and say, you know, this school is where I can compete um, to start as a freshman. And mm-hmm. also, and also I want to go somewhere I was wanted as well. Not, not, I mean, I mean, wanted and prioritized, I would say. So I think coach Mullen really prioritized me yeah. and I had two veteran guys who I can go out and learn from who was almost out the door. They were juniors too. I had CJ Henderson, who was number nine overall, big nine, Marco Wilson, who started all year for, the colonel. So, you know, I, I was coming into a situation where, you know, not even next man up, I was competing to start. So it yeah. was just like, and I could learn from those guys, pick those guys' brain and, and try to help, you know, involve my game as well. So I just think um, it was the best situation for myself, honestly. And then yeah. it just had the most pros and the least cons. You know, I sat down and made a business decision with my family, put on the Excel spreadsheet, the pros and cons of going to Florida, mm-hmm. Georgia, and um, Miami and Colorado. So, you know, Florida had the most pros and the least cons. And that's really why I chose Florida. Yeah. And playing in the SEC, especially playing in the secondary, man, you see top tier, top tier talent week in and week out. But your Every first week. big time exposure of like, <sighs> it's some real go getters out there was 2019 against LSU. Played mm-hmm. against Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. Uh, what type of learning experience was that for you going against that type of talent at the wide receiver position? Um, You know, it was great to see because, you know, I knew those guys were going to be high, you know, high draft picks and be successful in the NFL just because of what they were mm-hmm. doing to everybody else. So it was just great to see where I needed need to, you know, I had to, it was really motivation, honestly, because I was just a freshman. I was playing to the field, so I didn't get too much action. But to be able to go back and watch film and see, you know, myself out there, it was just like, you know, this is where I need, this is where I need to step my game up. This is where the, the level of competition where I want to be, this is where I need to play at. So, you know, I think that was really good learning lesson for me as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and- and let's fast forward to this past season. Uh, big time SEC matchup, 3.30 slate. I think I was on the call of that game as well, the CBS. Alabama and Florida. John Mechie, Jameson Williams. Yeah. Kair Elam, five versus eight and one. And I can tell you this much, young fella, you, you did your thing. You did your thing. You held your own, played high-level football. Uh, what was that what was the game plan for you going into that ball game? Number one, you're playing against one of the best teams in the in America. Number two, you're playing against two prolific NFL caliber wide receiver, wide receivers, and you knew sure. you were going to have one on one opportunities. What were your What was your mindset going into that ball game, and what did you want to establish in that ball game? No, I just wanted to establish that I was the best on the field. Honestly, you know, going into that game, I had that game circled because we had just lost to Alabama in the SEC championship game. So yep. I had that game circled, and I just wanted to go out there and just really dominate those guys, honestly. You know, I thought Jameson was a hell of a player, and I thought Matthew was also a hell of a player as well. But, you know, I feel like I was the best. So when I stepped on the field, I just wanted to prove that, um, you know, 
I just I just really wanted to prove that just that I was the best in the country. That was my goal and, going into that game. And you did. And you did. Now, if you go back in time, if you guys don't remember that ball game, Kyrie got injured in that ball game. Um, but before the injury, you was playing some high level football. And and are you aware that Jamison has stated that you you were the best corner he's faced? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh, that boy said he's not surprised. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised, well, but he, well, he, he said it. He, he said but, it. But, he, I'm, but uh, don't get me wrong now. Jameson is the best to ever probably come through the SEC, honestly. Um, you got Devontae Smith. You got Devontae Smith. But uh, behind him, I think I think Jameson be right there neck and neck because you would you look at when you look at not even offensively, when you look at special teams as well. Yeah, he'll think nobody better. He yeah, Gunner. You, not a yeah. lot of receivers going down and Gunner hitting people like that. So exactly. You know, I, I, I love his game as well. And then Mechie is good too. He's tough as well, but. You know, I had to hold my own that game. You know, I got injured. You know, it's, but this game not about excuses, honestly. If I, yeah. you know, what I'm saying, I got to put my best tape on the field every time I'm on the field. But um, I ended up spraining three ligaments in my knee. I continued to play, but an ugly, you know ugly injury. It was an <laughs> ugly injury. And not number one, I'm. I don't know how you were you were able to return in that ball game. But let's talk about the injury factor. You know what happened in that ball game. And I know firsthand, playing the cornerback position, if you're not 100% healthy, especially if you're dealing with an injury to your lower extremities, you're not going to be the player that you can be when you're 100%. How did that injury affect you, especially whenever you got back into the lineup? Were you the same Kair before the injury, or did you feel some limitations based on the uh, the injury? Yeah, I couldn't really stop on the dime how I wanted to when I came back. But like I said, this game about excuses. Like I feel like every time, like my dad, um, heart gets on me all the time when I was uh, like trying to kill rehab and come back earlier sooner than I did because I had a mm-hmm. six, seven week injury, but I came back in three. But honestly, you know what I'm saying? I really couldn't stop on a dime how I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, it's just honestly in my head, I had to block that out. Honestly, just, you know what I'm saying? Put some icy on it. Icy on it because my whole goal was really I want to prove like I was the best in the country. But my uh-huh. first goal was for us to go back to the SEC championship and win it. And so, shit, that's really why. You know, I um, honestly, I would say that's really why I played because it was more than just me. Uh, at the end of the day, it was about our team success and, mm-hmm. and only for only for. And I felt like give us the best the chance for us to win. You know, I had to play at a high level as well. So I just had to plug all that stuff out. Though. So we got Pat P in the fold with us right now. We got three corners. I guess I'll be the inside corner because both of y'all big body guys. So I guess I'll be the inside. I play the slot corner right now. We got Kyrie on one side. We got Pat on the other. Who going to be left? Who going to be right? You know that left corner get all the action. <laughs> I play wherever, coach. <laughs> man, put the young fella. Put the young fella on the left side, man. He got young legs. Nah, man. nah. I, I want the best receiver. I want the best receiver. Oh, he want the X. There you yeah, go. I want the X. He want, want the smoke. Right. He want yeah, the smoke. Want smoke. Hey, Pat P. So we were just tapping in with uh, Kyrie talking about his outstanding game against Alabama, and then he ended up getting injured, but battle tested. I know one thing: you're not going to question the young kid's toughness because he was able to play through a tough injury. But talk about Pat P. Your experience playing in the secondary, playing against some of the best athletes in the world, but playing in a ball game where you know you're not 100% healthy, how do you know when to go or know when to, you know what, I might need to take one more, one more break, you know what I mean, take more time just to be able to get back in, do what I need to do, and being closer to 100% healthy. Man, my wife will tell you, man, they got to literally pull me off the football field. You know, they, I got to come off the field on the football, on a wheelchair or, or something. I can't be able to go you know, you know, if I, I, I have to be, you know, if I'm not 50%, you know, I'm probably not going to go, you know, but it's mind of a matter at that point, you know what I mean? But the biggest thing for me is I like to practice when I'm injured. You know, most guys, you know, they listen to the training. Mm. Like, oh, I want to, now I want to, you know, take an extra day off. I want to go out there and see what my limitations are on the practice field. I don't mm. want it to be my first time going out on the, you know, out on the, uh, on the gridiron making it be my first time, you know, going hundred percent. But for the most part, it's mind of a matter, man. You you just have to understand and know your body, uh, put your, put yourself in a, in a, in a game type situation before you get into a game and hell, if you can fight through a fight through it, if not, you know what I mean? Don't do it. You know, you know, your body better than, I mean, we know our bodies better than anybody. So only thing I can, only best advice I can give you is just listen to your, listen to your temple. Hey, you know, Pat, that, that, that was real. That hit something there you said, because Kair, you probably you're aware of this, you know, now playing the game as much as you've been playing the game. But most times when you're dealing with the injury, they sit you down. 
But Pat P, you said you want to practice when you hurt because now you know mm-hmm. where the limitations are and what you can do and what you can't do. And that could be a great insight as well to know, man, I can't go on game on game day. I ain't gonna be ready because right. I can't pl- I can't plant off my left foot, man. I ain't got that 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 burst that I need to have. So that's a unique mm-hmm. way of looking at an injury and moving forward. So that's that's like, nice. Nice insight. So like so like for this like past season, I had like a mild turf toe. You know, when you have a turf toe, they don't want you to practice at all. Mm-hmm. So with me, I didn't practice, but I practiced. You know, you know every you know you got blitz period seven on. You know every category go on throughout the throughout the day, but I probably get you know I'll see the strip obviously, um, and see what play is a deep route or what play I can break on and maybe get in for that play, come out for the next four, and just work a rotation that way, kind of building it up seeing where you know like i said what my limitations are going forward throughout the week that that that's what gives me a better peace of mind going into the game no doubt yeah that's good insight that's good insight so you know looking at your career at florida the dan mullen era kaya got off to a hot start in gainesville but ended pretty abruptly uh what what went wrong during the dan mullen era and what do you think the future of the program looks like (laughs) <laughs> um honestly you know it was just i think it was just shoot it's just a part of the, a part of the profession honestly you know what i'm saying yeah. you, you ain't gonna all you you're not gonna be up you're not gonna be up all the time mm-hmm. it was just like for me it was just like i gotta i gotta make sure everybody know we we going out there and we getting evaluated like uh, at the end of the day we right. got, my goal is we're trying to win as well so you know what i'm saying i'm trying to play at a high level no matter what's going on like we we've we been playing with no coaches like i'm joking what if they ball roll the ball out there i'm trying to win so mm-hmm. basically that was the biggest thing i was trying to just be a leader and trying to mo- like motivate my teammates but you know it's a part of the profession you're not always going to be up you know i mean shoot you're going to be down sometimes so um at the end of the day we kind of i was trying to make sure we know we couldn't kind of focus on that you know what i'm yeah. saying i'm you know but I mean, I don't know what happened. I mean, that's, that's just what it was. That's how the dice rolled. But, <laughs> you know, I just I had to do it. my part as well. I had to fight back from uh, getting, like, I had to rehab and things like mm-hmm. that to get back all the way healthy as well because, you know, I was banged up. But I just had to do my part. But um, it's that's how it was, honestly. I don't know what went wrong. I can't point the finger and say, but I just had to do point. Like, I had to look in the mirror and say, Kaya, what can I do better? Yeah. Hey, Kai, I got a quick question for you. I just, I just heard what well, I just saw that you uh, gave her a, a memorable speech such as I did when I was in high school picking my uh, my college saying that you was going to spend three years. You already had your mind set on spending three years at the University of Florida. What gave you, I guess, that motivation and knowing that, you know, that was your end goal? What gave me that motivation? Yeah. Honestly, I just, I would say I would credit that to my work ethic, honestly. Mm. I knew once I came into college, I knew nobody, nobody was gonna outwork me, you know. Mm-hmm. And I would just say, um, I like I feel like my confidence came from my work ethic as well, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I just, you know, I just I don't know, I just felt like that was God's plan for me, you know, and I just worked like it, like I was trying to leave in three years. So and that's what ended mm-hmm. up happening. And um, I think I already made the right decision, but we're gonna see. Yeah, keep speaking everything into existence as well, so yes, it can sir. manifest, you know what I mean? So you got a team in your that's, mind that you want to go to. Go ahead and throw it out there to the world. Let it let it, <laughs> let it circulate. No, I, let it. I wouldn't say I have a favorite team I want to go to, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, whatever t- team is, is, is shoot, pick me, take a chance. I mean, it's not even a chance, it's an investment, honestly, because I'm gonna make no I'm gonna make that I'm gonna make that better than what, what they thought it would be. So, but you know, my, my goal is going to the team is I want to have an immediate impact. Mm-hmm. So if that's in purple, was that if that's in purple lining up with Pat Pete, if that's Uh-oh. anywhere else, you know what I'm saying? That's that's uh have an immediate impact so you know i feel like i'm the best corner in the class but i just want to have the, i want to have the biggest impact in the whole job class so that's all def- that's all defensive players and that's everybody in the job class as well so you know i'm going to do i'm going to do that i'm really confident in that and um you know what i'm saying and no matter who who pick me i'm gonna say i'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same i'm gonna have the same mindset so I like it. I like it. And, and talking about competing and, and believing in your ability, uh, you su- you surprise a lot of naysayers with your 40 time running sub 4-4 at the combine. Four three, that, four, three. What, 4-3, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm man, sorry. Get, four, them, I'm sorry. get them right, man. Right. No, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, I, I can't shortchange you. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. No doubt right. about it. That's a big, that's a big, big difference. But like I said, you surprise a lot of people. Most, 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 a lot of scouts, coaches thought you might be in the high four fours or four fives. You went out there and ran four three. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. What did that validate or confirm for you? Oh, myself, I never knew I was going to run 4-3. You didn't have to tell me that, but um, I think it surprised a lot of people because, you know, I'm playing corner, I'm always, I think my press technique and things, I'm always over the top and I'm always in control position. Mm-hmm. So I don't really have to show off my elite speed. And I feel like you, if you, if you running your top speed in a game, that means you chasing cheeks, like you getting no beat. Question. So, no so question. I mean, honestly, I mean, no honestly, question. I feel like hey, that's, that's I, another, uh, what's up? A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. If, you run as, if you run as fast as you can, you chase, you try to go catch yeah. up. <laughs> hey, that ain't no, no good I'm feeling on. either. No hey, doubt about it. But you striking as fast as you can, that mean I'm panicking. Man, this man that got two steps on me. I got to catch him and get in that hip pocket. But hey, keep going. But well said, though. Go ahead. Keep keep going. A lot of people yeah. don't understand the but, life yeah, of playing I, the cornerback. Yeah, I knew that already. I knew that already. I just needed to get healthy, honestly. That was my biggest thing, just get back healthy from the season, you know what I'm saying, and get my knee back healthy. But I knew I was going to run for three. But um, I think really what it solidified was I had elite, I had elite speed. But, yep. I mean, honestly, when you look when you look back at it, like, I have production too, you know what I'm saying? I went mm-hmm. against the best every every week. But I don't think that just solidified me uh, being a, one of the top corners, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm, I believe I'm the best. But, you know, I think that solidified that I had elite speed, though. And why do you believe you're the best corner in the draft? Uh, I believe that because, you know what I'm saying, I just feel like when it goes from production, consistency, and you want to say, uh, shoot, intangibles, like, intangibles, like, just scratch intangibles. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? When you look back at person, when you look back at work ethic, when you look mm-hmm. at doing more with less, I feel like nobody's done, who, who, who can be in my shoes, can do the same thing I did, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ball skills, length, speed. I think that don't make you a great corner. I think that's technique. I think that's going against the best every weekend and week out. And, and like when you look back in the SEC, who, who lead the SEC in like completion percentage and pass rate, like me, I had the best in the last three years. Like, you know what hmm. I'm saying? And uh, I can take away the ball at the elite level. You know what I'm saying? I have the length, the speed and everything else, technique and people in my corner who could push me to, to be the best because I'm not satisfied where I am. You know, I want a Super Bowl ring and a gold jacket, but mm. you know what I'm saying? And I don't think I'll be satisfied until I get that. But, um, you know, I really think, believe that I'm the best, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to prove to everybody, you know, my cons of whatever they say I can't do, you know, I'm going to do it. So, but it's not proving it to everybody else. It's proving it to myself. Hey, Pat right. P. Yo. Now, me and you, we've done a thousand different shows this offseason. Yep regarding the Minnesota Vikings in the first round selection, right? Yep. I for one say they go like, they got to go get a corner. Yeah, they, yeah. And, somebody and, on defense, a corner or D-tack. Somebody, somebody that can go hunt number 12. Right. I mean, 100%. hearing hearing Kyrie talk, I know you watched this game, watched this film. How would you feel if the Vikings take Kyrie 12? Man, I would love it. You know, like you, like you said, you know, we need some help, you know, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. You know, I don't know where they're going to go. Uh, with the pick, but you know, I think Kyrie can be a, a great addition to this to the secondary. Like you said, got a uh, nice size, um, great speed, ball skills. Any from Florida? That, that, yep, from the crib. Any from the from crib. Any <laughs> <laughs> from the crib. And you know, you have all those great intangibles that you know make up a a great defensive back. So it would mean the world, you know, f- you know, to me to have another guy, you know, from the from from the, from the state of Florida sharing the backfield. Uh, with me and Cam and Harrison and, and, and all the rest of the guys. So, um, hey, speaking in, speaking into this. No question. <laughs> and, and I can tell you this much, Pat P. Y'all get Kaya at 12. That rookie dinner going to be real nice, too, for the DB. Uh, nah, nah, yeah, nah, 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 I don't nah, think nah. I ever had a first round of, uh, uh, in the DB <laughs> room. So, <that'd> be great. <laughs> yeah, that rookie dinner going to be real nice at 12. Hey, Viking hey. fans, y'all tuning into our show. Y'all watch us religiously. We know he got to improve the second day. How y'all feel? Kaya Elam, check his tape out. Played at SEC. You heard his numbers. The man yeah. is confident. The man is a broker. And you put him with Pat P. You got Cam Dantzler, the needle. Pat P going to be the, <laughs> the, 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 the wise one teaching and, 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 and encouraging. And now you're building for the future. So let us know how you feel. Because I do believe, forget what you're talking about. Go get somebody at 12 that can go hunt number 12. And that's Aaron Rodgers. Because if you don't stop Aaron Rodgers, if you don't stop them pass catchers and everybody in that north, you're always going to be looking outside when it comes to playoff time. Go find somebody that can go hunt number 12. What, what Mike T that's said, it. go get guys that that look like what they hunt. Kyrie, <laughs> he looked like what he hunt. Go get him. Go get him. So I, I love Growing him. up. 
Growing up, Pat Pete, Pat Pete and Revis were the guys who I watched every single day. Probably every mm. single day. I get home from school. I, I, I you know, those are guys who I watch every single day. And I would love That's crazy. You know what I'm saying, to learn from them, you know what I'm saying? But um I, I was just about to ask you that question, Kaya, with you going to Florida with a lot of great, you know, Florida cornerbacks coming out of Florida with uh, Joe Hay and Janoris Jenkins. Uh, the list go you, the list goes on. Um, is there anybody that you compared yourself to going into Florida? And well, you just answered my second part of the question. Was there any <laughs> NFL players that you was mostly uh, influenced by? No, I mean I, I watch everybody, man. I just feel like mm-hmm. I can learn so much from everybody's. You know, every anybody successful. You know, I feel like I learned so much from. Them. And to mm-hmm. add to my game as well, not to compare myself with contrast and nothing like that. But like you and Revis were my, you know, who guys who I watch all the time. Like I'm saying, just, just, just great at the position. You know what I'm saying? You have position flexibility. You travel. You know what I'm saying? You have great ball skills. Play return. Um, like I just love. I mean, I love that. You know what I'm saying? I love Revis. Yeah. He was just he was just a dog, you know what I'm saying? And and yeah. I guys who I just modeled after. But um I mean I am gonna watch all the gator corners as well. I mean I, I love me, I love Joe's game, I love Janoris's game as well. Um Quincy, T's, all those guys, Marco, CJ. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. I can tell you this much, just watching you uh during the season, your entire time at Florida, and then watching some of your draft tape, the corner that comes to mind when I watch you is Chris McAllister. From Baltimore. Mm, from a throwback. First round, yeah. <laughs> Chris McAllister was hell. I don't know if you paid no attention, but it. when you get chance, Kyrie, go watch mm-hmm. some of Chris McAllister. Big body. Yeah. Ass Lay that boom corner. on you. Fast. At the line of scrimmage, didn't want no problems. Mm-hmm. From Arizona, got drafted in the first round by the Baltimore Ravens. Your dad know who I'm talking about. That's the first name I said when I was talking to your dad about you. Uh, throughout the season. I said, man, that man, if he had 21, he looked just like Chris McAllister because that's what Chris yeah, McAllister was about. At Baltimore. So I gotta go watch film. Go, go watch film and let me know what you yeah, think. But that's that. a guy who who who's a big body guy, but fast. And at the line of scrimmage, which is one of your strengths, he's so disruptive and patient. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the, the, your game is similar to his game, along with the measurables as well. Uh we talked about the Minnesota Vikings, and I just hyped up the Vikings potentially taking you at 12 because they they need to go cornerback, in my opinion. But I've heard you've been on quite a few visits. Uh, so far throughout this draft process. Tell us about some of the visits you've been on and some of the impressions you received from those visits. Who, who who have you visited so far? I've been to a few teams. I've visited a few teams, you know. Um, shoot, I mean, I love them. I just got to learn, get to learn as much as I can and also um, just express who I am and, and my show my football IQ as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I've been to a few teams. I don't, I don't really want to share right now. I just, I'll wait to drive back. No, nah, I went to I wait to drive there to share, but you know, okay. So I, when you say a few, okay, okay, let's do this since you want to share the teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many teams have you visited? How many teams have I visited? Like yeah. I would say like four or five. Four or five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a good number. That's a number. A good good number. Good no question. Four <laughs> or five. Hey, uh, I gotta ask you this real quick. I know you probably answered this already, but were there any pre-draft questions that threw you off? Because we all know they can ask some weird, weird, some weird questions. questions, questions. questions. <laughs> was there any one of that threw you off? Pre-draft questions? Yeah. Like, you, like you, you were like, man, what? They, they pulled you in the little hotel room and got like 10 coaches in there. You know, they start rambling, talking about ball. Then you got this one guy that's going to ask you this one. Off the wall. Off the wall question. Did you have any of those? Nah, nah. See, man, I don't know. I feel like other people might have got that. I mean, at Florida, I think I was pretty clean, so I don't think they really asked me no off the wall questions oh, like okay. that. <laughs> no, well, I don't really. I, I can't really say I did how, uh, get one like that. I don't think so. Yeah. I, okay. I, the one that always sticks out to me is just like, what's the difference between a pencil and a lead? I mean, yeah, a, pen, a lead pencil. I think it was a lead and a pen. Yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Hey, and going, hey, Kyrie, going back to that team, you know, some of the teams you visited became public information, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Commanders was one of the teams you visited as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So how how was that visit for you going to the Commanders? You how saw was that? that one, huh, Matt? Yeah, yeah. That's public information. He, I know he didn't want to go ahead and reveal the teams, but guess what? They revealed it for you. So, Kaya, tell us about <laughs> yeah. that visit. What was your impressions visiting the commanders? 
it was uh, it was great. It was great. You know, I got to pick the DB coach's brain, the DC's brain, um, mm-hmm. and I just found out what they what they think I just could, get be, could get better at. So, you know what I'm saying? I really applied that to how I work, you know what I'm saying? Fuel to the fire and also just uh, just things I could critique myself on and get better at, honestly. That's really that's really why I enjoy these visits so much. And I also get to explain, like, myself and, and show off my football IQ. But yeah. um, it was awesome, though. It was awesome. What What are some areas you believe you can get better at? Um, I just I improve my tackling technique. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I just really like just getting a guy on the ground in open space. I feel like yeah. uh, there's no such thing as a perfect tackle in open space. You got to get a guy on the ground. Mm-hmm. But um, I was always trying to whack, whack, tackle, whack, tackle, take somebody's knee out. Like it was just like I was always getting taught that. So I was just like always trying to make the hard hit. But not, but at the end of the day, like in open space, you got to get a guy on the ground. But you know, I'm confident. I like I'm confident. I was more um conscious of it uh when i came back from my injury so i think i could clean that up but that's always it's uh, some always you can always clean up honestly yeah and then um you know i got like a few holding calls this year some of them i ain't gonna lie more than half of them was it was uh, it was, it was, it was bs i ain't believe them but you know what i'm saying i still got called but honestly just get my hands get my hands down on um, down the field um honestly i think i can clean that up and um just being a better leader i feel like there's no there's no such thing as um I would say just motivating. There's no like limits of motivating your teammates, honestly. So just being a better leader as well. I try to be more of a vocal leader this year than any other year, um, especially when I was injured, just trying to help out my teammates as much as possible or help us win. Hey, Pat P, you, you're yep. a student in the game. You, you have so many different techniques and things you practice on, man. Is there anything you would, uh, you know, tell Kyrie when it comes to becoming a, a profound cornerback? You know, some of the your regiments, workout regiments and things like that, that can improve his game. Uh, well, it sounds like, you know, Kyrie has a great head on his shoulders, you know, always working on his game, always trying to find ways, you know, to better his game, um, add new, add new, um, you know, things from other people's games as far as if it's at the line of scrimmage, you know, trying to find a way to stay more patient. You alluded uh, to talking about that you watched Darrell Revis when he was, uh, uh, back in his heyday when he was playing. And I used to watch Darrell all the time and, one of the things I used to always take away from is how he used to stay so patient at the line mm. of scrimmage. Yes. And all I did was I when I uh, when I did used to watch him, I just to watch his tape in slow motion. And I talk about this all the time, Matt, is yeah. watching tape in slow motion, being able to understand what the receiver is really doing at the line of scrimmage. Because at the end of the day, all this stuff at the line of scrimmage, he's not doing anything but coming straight through the line. His hands and his shoulders giving us the illusion that he's going left and right. So if you watch the film in slow motion, I think that'll slow your game down a lot as far as at the line of scrimmage, being able mm. to take away angles, being able to stay hold, hold in there just a little bit longer versus making uh, creating that false step because we all know that a lot of coaches like teaching that technique. But for me, if I'm, if I'm at the line of scrimmage, I'm up there for a reason. I'm up there to get my hands on the receiver, you know, for a reason. So, uh, those are just some of the things that I like to uh, uh, to do um, to help my game is uh, watch the film in slow motion. I'm always talk about the hat drill when I'm yeah. Tell, uh, tell them about out. the hat drill. Yeah, yeah what's that? Put a visor, yeah, put a visor on and just get a receiver. Uh, we always talk about uh, what well, coaches always talk about. Keep your eyes down. Keep your eyes down. All right, what are we doing to help keep our eyes down? Because it's so hard when you're looking at a at a deep at a receiver. You can see the whole picture, but how can we train our eyes to stay down? So what I do is I put the vibes on, do all my normal stuff, my DB stands. I'm in my DB uh, press technique, go through all my reg- uh, routine. And as I'm going uh, through my routine, if, if a receiver's with me, I can tell if my eyes are coming up or down because the visor is, is over my uh, the visor is over my eyes. So I don't I can't look anywhere else, but Gotta look focus down. on the the, uh, the, the mid focus point. on the point. Yeah, the midpoint or focus on whatever I'm trying to focus on. That makes so sense. that's just something that helps train my eyes, and that's just something that helps help me in my career in the long run. That's why guys, even to this day, guys are like, man, how the hell you stay so square? How are you so patient? Because I trained my eyes so long over the years to where it's like second nature. I watch film so long over the years. It's like they're moving so now. It's like I'm. I'm making the move before they make the move. You know what I mean? So mm. those are just some things that I think, you know, that you can you know, add to your to your regiment to, to, to help prepare your game. Gotcha. Most definitely. Yeah. Appreciate and, that. Uh, talking about yes, preparing sir. your game, 
they, I know it depends on who actually drafts you, right? But are you planning on rocking number five if you get a chance to? Oh, most definitely. That's most definitely. No question. <laughs> No, definitely, no and, question. Hey, and another big thing, I see you got a uh, your twenty first birthday is about a week after the draft. Man, you what still twenty? Yeah, yeah he, no, he about to be, yeah, he's still twenty. Hey, yeah, Mac, my I birthday was, May fifth. Yeah, so yeah, he's he's about right. Cinco yeah, de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. as well. Yeah, that's I really why well I rock well right. fire though. Oh, because yeah, your birthday awesome. May fifth. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. What's your plans? Like what's your plan? What's your plans for draft night? And uh, what you uh, like? You plan on celebrating with your, with your family? Yeah. With your, what, you, with your yeah friends, what you got planned? Yeah. So I'm gonna have a job party. Just the only family though. Just family. Just family. Uh-huh. Okay. Just family. I feel like that, I, those people just sacrificed so much to, for me to put me in the position that I'm in right now. You know what I'm saying? And um, you can't. And I, I mean, you gotta enjoy it while you can because it only happened once in a lifetime too. Right. But yeah. um. The way after that night though, it's over with. I'm locked in because you go right in OTA that next week. So I'm <laughs> yes, just sir. Right, yes, sir. take care of body and just you know make sure I'm in, in tip top condition. Hey Kaye, you know your old man, your old boy gonna cry when you get drafted. You know that, right? Because he cried when you announced <laughs> what school you were going to. I still remember that. That man had more, he should have more Kleenexes, man, available. Man. That man was, was shedding tears, man, like a water hose. You know he's gonna cry draft night, right? You know that, right? No doubt about it. We'll hey, see, we'll see. Make, no make sure you have some see. tissue. Make sure you have a tissue box near, near him because he's going to need it. <laughs> they go, hey, Pat P, is number five available for Minnesota? Who got five? Uh, got five? Ty the Smith kick? has number five right now. He's a corner as well. Okay, so five already taken. Well, hey, it, man. He can be bought. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Viking fans, what's up? Y'all know y'all need a cornerback. What's up? Let us know how you feel about Kai here at 12. Big body corner ran 4-3, played at high level, played against some of the who's of who in college football, the wide receiver, and put the clamps on them, put the handcuffs on them. All I know is go get somebody that can hunt 12. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Hey, Kai, yeah, but man, number one, thank you for joining us, man. A sound, candid yes, conversation, man. No doubt. You're going no doubt. in the right direction. Whoever drafts Kai or Elam, they get in a big time player. Playmaker who plays with a chip on his shoulder, and he's been doing it the right way his entire life, and he will continue to do it the right way, man. So, best of luck to you in a few weeks. We Thank will you. hear your name called on day yes, one. Sir. It's about how high it will be, but that's what we're going to throw out there, and hopefully, it could be. I got seven right there. That's that purple and gold. You look good in that purple. <laughs> Pat P, and that rookie dinner, Let's Pat P. That rookie dinner. Gonna hey, be I, hey I, I'm <laughs> looking forward to that one if that happens. I can't, oh, I can't wait. wait. No it's gonna question. be a limit, though. It's gonna be a limit. Y'all ain't gonna, no, no. Y'all ain't gonna tax me. No, no, no. Wait, no, no. Just the rookie dudes. That's all. They ain't gonna hit uh-uh. you for about twenty bands. They might hit you for about uh-uh. ten uh-uh. or twelve. We don't, we don't have to talk about that. It's gonna be a little limit. I ain't, I ain't going playing all that. Yeah, yeah. I went second round. They hit me for ten. Yeah. It was eighty eight hundred to be exact, and then I had to fly him to New York. Yeah, I, I mean second. that's that, that's that's I could do that. I could do that. I ain't no, 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 no. But we telling you trying to go twelve. You right outside the top ten. That's, that nah, 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 man. I'm gonna pay my due diligence for sure, but I can't. Nah, that I, check nah, that I, check a little different. I got. I'm I'm gonna have a financial <laughs> value. Nah, no, I can't. Yeah. Talk about this. I can't do that. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> Yeah, Pat P gonna want a Louis the Thirteenth bottle. He a vet. He, nah, I, he gonna have to Pat P. He gonna have to pay that for himself. I don't do the rookies like that. No, you don't do the rookies like that. I had to go get three bottles for all the vets. Yeah, the the, the gotta, oldest members old in the secondary, the oldest members in the secondary, they all they the three oldest guys. They wanted their own bottle. They looked out for me because nah. it could have been worse. They hit they hit Willie Cologne for almost thirty some thousand. Offensive Ooh. lineman, he went third round. Ooh. Now we would have had a problem. We had to fight. That happened. Being hit me for thirty. Yeah, that's that's not happening. No, that's and I went third in third round. No, nah, we're not doing that. Somebody else got to get up at you. No, nah, I mean, I understand it's important to be a locker room guy. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. got to do your defense because everybody no else question. did that. Show. And the thing, too, you, you got to understand when you go into good situations, they're going to make sure it's fair. Ain't nobody going to try yeah. you like no duck and nothing like that. You know, yeah, I mean? That's, yeah, that was yeah, my yeah, experiences. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you go into yeah. a good situation, you can instantly see the atmosphere is legit. And if you go to Minnesota, you got you got, you got, you got, you got South Florida guy already right there. So you already know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we'll take care of you. We ain't on but that, I, man. Me, me, me and A probably can come up there for that for the rookie dinner though. Well, I pay for my own food. We can come up there and hang with you. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna have to talk about that. Hey, we gonna get Abe up there too as well, man. We come up there for rookie dinner. But hey, Kaya, man, best of luck to you. Uh, you. The draft is actually it. a week away. Uh, nothing but success for you moving forward, man. And, and and stay healthy and keep it going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I appreciate y'all so much. 
Man, yes, anytime, sir. man, do your thing, man. And go Tigers. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that. Nah, nah, hey, hey, I had to throw that in there, kid. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. Hey, Kai, you, you ever beat LSU? Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. No, we, no, nah, actually, nah. Damn. Damn. I ain't, nah, I ain't gonna lie, never beat LSU. My three years there, I've never beat LSU. Because 2019, they, that was when they went undefeated. Yeah. My sophomore mm-hmm. year, dang, my sophomore hey, year, lost y'all the fog. Could, yeah, y'all, yeah. <laughs> Y'all could have won that game. My man threw the shoe. Threw the shoe. <laughs> and game. That's not his fault. That's not his fault, man. That was a big penalty. That was a cost of pain. That was a big penalty. That was a big mistake. Yeah, that was a big... I mean, that was a big mistake. You know what I'm saying? He learned Who his lesson. Who was that? That was Marco? Yeah. He learned his lesson, though. That wasn't, that wasn't the reason we lost, though. That ain't wasn't the reason we lost. Nah, it, it, wasn't, wasn't, you know, but it was like a big mistake. Yeah, it was It was just a big turning point, though. But I tell you what, that thing was hilarious, though. <laughs> yeah, that was no credit. His boy threw the shoe twenty yards. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna lie. He ain't gonna think. I don't think he ever better let that one down. No, not against. No doubt about it. LSU. <laughs> no, he can't throw the shoe. Nah. nah, but I never be LSU in my three years though. But it's still go Gators though for sure. Yeah, I already know, man. <laughs> well, you, you take care, man. Wish you nothing but the best, and uh, I can't wait to see your name called. Yes, sir. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate y'all, man. 